Thank you for joining me today for our continuing study in Ephesians. Today we're going to be in chapter 5, verses 21 through 33, as we continue to look at Paul's description of children of the light. Join me in prayer before we start. Father, thank you today for our time to come together as your children and to study your word. We thank you for the Bible and the blessing and the gift that it is to us as it has been preserved throughout the generations for us today. Help us, Lord, as we look at the relationship today between husbands and wives and Christians in Christ and Christ and the church. And help us, Lord, to understand what your purpose and your will is for these relationships. Guide us in your truth, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, as we look at uh, being children of the light, we're looking specifically at how husbands and wives should behave in their relationship with each other as children of light. So when we read this passage, we have to understand that Paul is writing to Christian husbands and Christian wives. Uh, There's another passage in 1 Corinthians that deals with wives that are Christian and husbands are not, and husbands that are Christians and wives are not. But for this passage, he is talking about a relationship between a Christian wife and a Christian husband. So let's begin to what it, with what he says in verse 21 of Ephesians 5. He says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. There's a word here that really offends people in today's modern world, and that is the word submit. People misunderstand what the word submit is really all about, especially from a Christian perspective. From God's perspective, what is submission? First of all, God is the author of submission. He teaches us that we should submit to Him as our Heavenly Father. That means that we look to Him as being our leader. We look to Him as being the final voice and choices that are made. He is our God. Then Jesus taught us even more about submission when He was on this earth because Jesus submitted Himself to his Father's will, to God's will in his life. Remember at the garden when Jesus prayed not uh, that this cup could pass from him. He did not want to go through the agony of the cross. But he finally came to the conclusion, Father, not my will, but your will be done. So he submitted himself to the Father's will. This is the kind of submission he's talking about here when he says that we we should submit one uh, to one another out of reverence for Christ. Then he goes into details now of how this submission should look in a husband-wife Christian relationship. Verse 22, he says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Again, what is said here offends so many people in our modern culture in the United States. But God is a God of order and a God of, uh, of purpose and direction. And for this to happen correctly in the Christian marriage, the husband is to be the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. We're going to explain this later in this passage of why this should be so acceptable to women. This should not be something that should be offensive to you, but it should be something that you desire in your marriage relationship. To submit to your husband is for you to see him as the head of the household. But remember, Christ is the head of your husband because your husband is a Christian. So in this relationship, wives should have no problems submitting themselves to their husbands. In verse 24, it says, Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Paul is drawing the the picture here, the comparison here, between a husband and a wife and Christ and the church. Christ is the head of the church. The church is the body of Christ. The body is the all believers who have accepted Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord. So the body, the church, is in submission to Christ, who is the head of the church. In the same way, the wife is in submission 
to the husband, even though they're all part, together they make up one, just as Christ and the church make up one, so does uh, the husband and wife make up one. He goes on to tell the husbands, and this illustrates even better the relationship. In verse 25, he says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Husbands, do you hear what Paul is writing here? He is saying that we should love our wives even as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He loved the church so much that he gave his life for the church. He loved the church so much that through his death and resurrection, the church is made pure. The church is presented to him without blemish. There is no fault found in the church anymore because that has been forgiven through Christ's death on the cross. Husbands, that means that we should be doing everything we can to make our wives pure, holy, perfect in their lives, making them the best that they can be. That's what Christ did for us. He made the church the best that it could be as it is presented to him as the body. We need to do the same thing for our wives, put her first in our lives, not above Christ, but first in the household, uh, in that relationship in the household, and doing everything we can to make her the best. Now, let me make a comment here uh, concerning husband and wife relationship. We'll talk about more, more about this next week when we talk about children. But where husband and wives get in trouble so many times in their relationship with each other is that they put children above each other. The husband may put children above the wife, or the wife may put children above the husband. That's not how God intends it. The wife should always have the husband above the children, and the husband should always have the wife above the children. And he says that we are to do everything as husbands to make our wives the very best that they can be. Loving them even as Christ loved the church. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loves us. Provide for, care for. Make them feel like queens in the household. Make them as special as you can. In verse 28 it says, In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Not only as Christ loved the church, But as we love our own bodies, men, he who loves his wife loves himself. Now, now he's going to get into the mystery of the marriage relationship, where the husband and wife become one together. Again, this goes so against our culture today, because it is so acceptable now for a man and a woman to just live together and not get married. Christ never intended that, because the... The bond of marriage brings the husband and wife together as one. And he's going to talk about this here. Uh, He says, in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. Even as Christ cares for the church, feeds the church, takes care of the church, we are to do that with our wives because she is part of us. The two become one, the scriptures tell us. What does that mean that the two become one? It means that we are one flesh together in the eyes of God. Uh, That is why divorce is not a good thing. Divorce should be avoided at all expenses if at all possible. I know there are situations where it's not, and it divorces that seems to be the only solution for there to be continued happiness in the people's lives. But as Christians, we should not even have divorce on the table. And if divorce does happen, it is the very last resort possible because you're tearing to a body apart when divorce happens. The two that have been made one in the eyes of God 
are literally being ripped apart in the eyes of God because of divorce. So it should be the last thing that we would want to turn to. Verse 31 says, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. Again, he's pointing out what should happen in, which happened in a Christian relationship. What should take place between a Christian man and a Christian woman? The Christian man should leave his family, his, his parents, and the Christian wife should leave her, her, leave her parents, and the two become one together. That means that the husband does not put his mother and father ahead of his wife. And that means that the wife does not put her mother and father ahead of her husband. Again, this is one of the big problems in marriages today. When the wife puts her parents ahead of her husband, or the husband puts his parents ahead of his wife. Never should be that way. Because the two are one together, the husband should always put the wife first, and the wife should always put the husband first in every situation in life, except when it comes to their submission to Christ, to God through Christ. Christ is the head of both of them. He's first in their lives. And then they put the, the wife puts the husband next, and the husband puts the wife next as the two become one flesh together. He finishes up this passage in verse 33 by saying, However, each one of you also must, must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So the bottom line in everything that Paul has said to us here, he makes it very clear at the end and gives us just one statement on how we should conduct ourselves in a husband-wife relationship. He says, Husbands, you are to love your wife as you love yourself. That's what I've been talking to you about. That's what it should be in a marriage relationship. And he says, wives, you should respect your husband. It breaks my heart today to see so many marriages that do not operate on these principles, that do not take God into the marriage with them. I believe a successful marriage is a marriage of three, the husband, the wife, and Christ. And when the three are together in marriage, then the marriage has a great chance of being a wonderful relationship. And God will bless that marriage. And the husband will be the head of the household. The wife will submit to the husband. The husband will love the wife even as he loves himself. And the children will grow up seeing the right relationship that should be between a husband and a wife so that they can con continue that when they get married and have their own husband or wife. I challenge all of us today to look at our relationships between a husband and a wife and let's make it what the Bible says it should be, what Paul has taught us here today because we are reflecting Christ to the world again. Remember, this is all about us being children of light. Paul challenged the couples, the, the married couples of the church to show the world what a relationship should be like in Christ. That's what he's challenging us to do today. So I hope we'll use our marriages to be a reflection of Christ to the world as we live as children of light. Would you join me as we close in prayer? Father, thank you so much for allowing us to study your word today. And Father, what we study today is so contradictory to what the world's example of marriage is and their viewpoint of marriage. So help us, Lord, as Christian couples today to show the world what marriage really is, to show them the example that we should be so that they can see Christ and how we should be children of light. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.